Colonel, if, if Russia were to use chemical weapons, would the U.S. and NATO have to rethink their response? Uh, they would have to rethink it, but I don't think we're going to use or cause to be used chemical weapons. Uh, but I believe strongly that if uh, the Russian forces get bogged down, and they will from time to time, that Putin will authorize the use of chemical weapons. He's done it before, uh, and uh, he's likely to do it again since he is focused single-mindedly on taking over all of Ukraine and anything that deters or detracts from his capability to do that, he's going to react. Uh, he's going to react accordingly. You saw initially, the attack was supposed to be a cakewalk. They were going to roll right in and take over Ukraine. It wasn't going to be a problem. The Ukrainians would give up. When it got to be a problem, when the Ukrainians fought back, galvanized by their president uh, to defend their country and their people, um, when the Russians slowed down as a result of this resistance and the Ukrainians started taking casualties among the very poorly uh, uh, deployed Russian troops along the main supply routes, uh, the gloves were off. And Putin decided he was then going to do what we would never think of doing, and that is indiscriminately uh, bomb civilians, uh, uh, hospitals, uh, retreating civilians, use indirect fire like artillery and multiple rocket launchers and airstrikes to kill civilians, other noncombatants. So he's capable of doing anything since he is single mindedly focused on, focused on one thing, and that is taking over Ukraine. Shep? Well, to, to go in there, the president says it's not worth risking World War III. But, but, Colonel, is there anything more that you think the U.S. and NATO might be able to offer the Ukrainians' military? Well, we need to send them, as, as long as we can, uh, anti-tank weapons, any anti-aircraft weapons. Uh, uh, Clint Watts was talking about how the eastern part could get sealed off by Russian forces linking up in the center of the country. We need to get as, mu as many as these of these kinds of weapons to them as fast as we possibly can to counteract any of the, uh, the Russian capability on the ground and in the air. Uh, the Colonel, other thing it looks we like, could do... Oh, I'm and, sorry, go ahead. No, the other thing we could do is, is to work harder with our allies to make sure that they don't, and other countries, that they don't skirt the restrictions we play, placed on the Russians. Mm -hmm. So far, it's been very, very porous, Shep. Yeah. You, you know, the Western side is the real concern now. They're, they're, they're bombing in the West. It, it kind of looks like they're trying to cut off those supply lines. That's how the weapons get in there to the Ukrainian military. Or does it look like something more than that, this move of Putin's attacks to the West? No, no, I think that's one of their objectives is to cut off the capability for them, for the Ukrainians to be resupplied. Don't forget, if they do that and also seal off the coast of Ukraine from the Black Sea, there won't be able to be any, uh, any evacuations. Uh, there won't be able to be any resupply. Uh, to any of the Ukrainians. So it's really important that we get these supplies to Ukrainian forces as quickly as possible. Colonel Jack Jacobs, for your time, sir, I thank you.